Musician and artist Michael Bashaw creates steel sculptures that aren't only interesting to look at, they create a unique sound, and Bashaw knows how to tune it. Let's take a look. Years ago, I didn't really want to give up music and I didn't want to give up art, so I found, found a way to, to fuse those two. I was inspired by um, a number of people. Some key figures were Harry Parch, who was a maverick composer who built instruments to accommodate this 43-tone uh, scale that he worked in. I was really inspired by him. If I just played music for a living, I would have to really struggle. Or if I just made sculpture, it would probably be a struggle for me. But the fact that I can combine the two, it keeps it interesting for me. And it also is a way to make a living in both fields, but fusing the two, you know, it's kind of best of both worlds. I have uh, come up with some ideas and dreams that I end up uh, playing around with and making something out of. Usually I'm intrigued by what a sound might be, and so I'll come up with an idea to try to actualize that. I ask myself, what would happen if I enlarged something that was, you know, a handheld instrument? How would it sound if it's 10 feet tall instead of something you hold in your hand? Uh, what if it's made out of metal instead of wood um, or a gourd or something? And then I go about experimenting and I try to figure something out and make it look interesting and evocative and also something that you feel like you really want to play. And originally when I started making musical sculptures, I uh, wasn't so much thinking about doing performances with them, but I was interested in creating things that other people could play, that it's something I could put out in public and m maybe along a riverbank or in a park somewhere and people could come up and make music together. You know, people who may be total strangers might be able to have some kind of conversation. It's trial and error. It's playing around on them. It's uh, kind of just experimenting and seeing what uh, what works. This may not have worked for you. I don't know. You know, it may, but uh, works for me. If you approach them. Um, like as if they're a normal instrument, uh, you could get really frustrated, maybe. There are techniques that I've discovered over the years, and they become more than just one instrument, depending on how they're played, depending on what kind of mallet you use or what technique you use. I've done concerts in colleges where the art department is more interested in them than the music department, if we're incorporating students in the performance. A lot of visual arts students get excited about it. You know, it is what it is. Like I said, you have to accept them on their own terms, so that's okay with me. It's great when you're playing with other musicians, and it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it's the best feeling when it's almost like you're on automatic pilot. Everybody's there together, and you get a sense of the whole room lifting up, you know? And you're, you're doing it, you know, you're doing it, you're creating it, but the audience is also helping to create that, that feeling. And that's the best, that's, that's what you go for. If I'm up in the studio working, time just evaporates. You, you lose a sense of time when you're really in the moment and working on something. And hours can go by and you realize you have lost your sense of time and it's a great feeling. It's just, it's the best. Um, you feel like you're doing what your purpose is, you know? I can't see spending a lot of time on something I really don't have a lot of juice for. So I've got to get excited about the idea. And even if it's a commission, I don't just make something and fabricate something for money. I've got to feel good about it. I'll have an idea, I'll focus on something, I'll start playing with it, and then I'll rest a little while with it and um, know that some other part has to come along and and join up with the rest of what I've started. So I'll go about my day, I may find something in the street that I include in a piece. And I'll have happy surprises, and it'll go a whole other direction from what I originally intended. Um, even if I do a lot of drawings, 
uh, first as I start working on something it may take on a life of its own and I may go in a direction that I really hadn't anticipated so it's always fun um, allowing for that to happen can't be too rigid gotta allow for some play my wife and partner Sandy has been a critical part of this whole equation. Not only has she been supportive of what I do, but she has added so much to this ensemble, to the compositions that we've created over the years. She's a really fine songwriter. That's all played into Puzzle of Light as well. Improvisation is a big part of what I do, and so I think there's something appealing about that coming from medieval music and jazz. And then music from other places. I've always been intrigued by different uh, sonic palettes. And you listen to music from around the globe and there are sounds that are just uh, amazing. And I always wonder, how did they make that sound? What is that instrument like? How is it played? And that's kind of a big influence on me. And that wraps it up for this edition of Detroit Performs. As always, for more arts and culture, head to DetroitPerforms.org, where you'll find featured videos, blogs, and information of coming arts events. Also, check us out on Facebook and Twitter.